If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-loved items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. of His love and wonders and wonders of His love. Yes, God, the wonders of Your love. We want to glorify and magnify Your name together. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. 
Do you have some pre-love items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your Titan offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-love items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information.
What is the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Is it a separate experience from conversion? What is its purpose? Find out the answers to these questions and more in our upcoming session with Senior Pastor Chu. For further information, refer to the details on the screen. Christmas is coming! Come celebrate together with the children's ministry and let's experience the joy of Christmas together. See you all there! One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. Hello, hello. A very good, yeah, it took me a while. A very good morning to each and every one of you. Uh, you know, uh, it's so good to see all of you here in the house of God. It's, uh, it's really, really good to be in the house of God. This morning was, uh, it was awesome. But if you came in, you may notice something different about our hall, about our sanctuary, right? It's Christmas, right? Are we excited for Christmas? Christmas is around the corner again. I mean, thank you so much to the children and the youth. They put all this together, right? So uh, it's really, really nice. Christmas is around the corner. You know, every time Christmas comes, Christmas can always make the whole place shimmer. Okay, nope, they didn't get it. It's okay, it's all right. Uh, uh, that's that's, uh, that's uh, Taylor Swift's latest song, just so, just so I, I explain my joke. But it's nice, it's glittery. You know, Christmas always gives me the feel. It's always a very nice feel. So before we move on, I'm sure you came in and you got, you got this, all right? Did everybody get one of this? Everybody got one of this? You can wave it to me. You got one of this? What this is, is this is our Christmas invitation card. So this is not yours, but technically it's yours now, but we're hoping that you would actually give it away to somebody else, all right? So invite your friends to Christmas because it's going to be a wonderful Christmas this year. It's going to be the same time, Saturday 5, Sunday 8.30 and 11 o'clock, but we're hoping that you will bring your friends, we're hoping that you will invite your families and your loved ones because everybody needs to celebrate Christmas together. So if you don't have one of these invitation cards, our ushers at the door will be able to give one out to you, okay? So make sure you come so that you can also make the whole place shimmer. All right, anyways, um, we are, I would really like to welcome all the people who are new in this place this morning. So if you're here for the first time, we would really love to honour you. We want to say welcome to you and pray for you. So don't be shy. Uh, 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 if you are new here and you are the first time in SIBKL, can I invite you to raise your hands? Hey, she not just raised, she stood up. Thank you so much. So good to see you. Welcome to church. Anybody else? Did I miss you? Anybody to my left? Welcome to church. Thank you so much for being here. And you're sitting next to Fiona. Uh, that's a very blessed seat for you. Um, anybody else I missed? your view in church? Welcome. Welcome so much to church. Can everybody around her just say hi to her and greet her? Thank you so much. If I missed you, anybody that I missed, thank you so much. Oh, hi, sir. Good to see you. You're waving, which means that he's waving. Don't leave him hanging. All right, say hi to him. Anybody on the balcony that I missed? Are you here for the first time? We would love to welcome you to church. So all those who raise their hands, um, um, don't, don't leave straight after the service. Come and join us at the Connect Counter and our hospitality because we would love to bless you with something and pray for you. I have one last announcement which is next week, it's quite important, next week for our first service which is Saturday, there, are no, there, there, there will not be any children's ministry. Is that okay? But I'm not too sure if it affects you. But next week, third service, 
uh, the children ministry is going to celebrate Christmas. So invite your children, bring your children's children. No, no, wait, hold on. Bring your children's friend. All right, I was like, wait, hold on. That's not right. Bring your children's friend. All right. Bring your children's friend along. Uh, whether they're Christians or not, it doesn't matter. But we're going to have a great Christmas downstairs. So it's going to be wonderful. Let me pray. And then we'll, let's, let's do worship. Can I invite you all to stand? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for this time. Thank you, Father God, for this morning. We welcome you into the sanctuary. All the hearts here and all the bodies and souls and spirits here, we are going to worship you with one accord this morning. And we're going to say joy to the world because you have come. So we thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. joy of the Lord that is in the house today. And so we're going to sing this Christmas. We're going to start off the month of December singing this amazing song, Joy to the World. Usher in this season. Come on. Changing all 
victory in you, O oh Lord. And there is so much love. You take what is broken, O oh Lord, and you make it whole. You love us. As flawed as we are, as broken as we are, as weak as we are, you love us. And there is strength in your love. We stand in the power of your love and we are strong because of you. You, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, and we just humble ourselves before you. We didn't earn it. We didn't earn this love, but you give it freely. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just bow our hearts before you. We bow ourselves before you and anything you're carrying today with you, church. I don't know what you're going through in your life right now, but I just invite you to lay it down at the feet of Jesus. Keep your eyes fixed on Him. Bow before Him. Surrender to Him. Because His power is made perfect in our weakness. Be glorified. to the throne of mercy where would i kneel but at this cross of grace how great the love how strong the hand that holds us beautiful so beautiful
yours. We are forever yours. Thank you, Jesus. We belong to nobody else but the King of Kings. We belong to nobody else but Jesus, our Lord, our Master. We belong to nobody else, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that our life is safe in your hands. I thank you, Lord, that our families are safe in your hands. I thank you, Lord, that our future and our destiny is safe in your hands. Lord God, we thank you, Lord, and we worship you this morning. We worship you this morning. You know, just, just before we even move into a time of communion, just in your own place, just utter words of worship to God. Just utter words of praise to God. Just begin to sing a new song. Begin to sing a worship song to God. Just where you're sitting, just sing. Just You can pray in tongues. You can you speak in English. But just tell God how beautiful He is. How worthy He is. Oh Lord God, You're worthy. You're worthy, Father God. Yes. Yes, let your praise and your worship be like incense unto heaven. Just tell Him this morning how much you love Him. Oh, we love you, God. You are the first love of our life, the only love of our life, the only love that matters, that the only love that can fulfill and give us identity. Yes, Lord Jesus, we lift you up high above the heavens, high above our lives, high above, high above our houses, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, that we are yours and you are ours, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, we're going to move into a time of communion. I invite you to take your seats. If you don't have your communion pack, could you raise your hands? And I believe the men of communion will come and pass it to you. So if you just raise your hands, for your communion pack. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, communion is not just a dessert. Communion is worship. It is a participation of worship before our Lord, our Savior. Communion is also a remembrance a remembrance of what He has done for us. Communion is a remembrance that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And He brought us into covenant relationship with Him. This communion reminds us that we are covenant partners with God. That is a big thing. That is an awesome thing. Communion also reminds us that not only did Jesus die for our sins, but He's also going to come again and is also going to judge and rescue us, save us into our heavenly bodies. So before we even partake, can I just invite you in one minute to just come before God and renew yourselves to Him. Confess, renew, rededicate your life to Him. Just maybe another 30 seconds of silence. Jesus. Matthew 26, 26 says, While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Thank you, Father God, for this wafer that represents the body of Christ. The body of Christ that was broken for us, was beaten and bruised on our behalf. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ that by your stripes we were healed. We thank you for your sacrifice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's take of the bread. Verse 27. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, 
drink from it all of you this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins thank you Jesus for this cup that represents the blood of Jesus that was shed on that cross may the blood of Jesus wash all of us clean white as snow forgiving us our sins and cleansing us from all our unrighteousness may the blood of Jesus cover all of us here protecting us from all harm and protecting us and our families Lord we thank you Lord for the blood of the covenant of Jesus Christ in Jesus name we pray amen thank you Jesus thank you Father God for this communion that we can remember you for what you've done for us we're approaching you with a heart of thanksgiving with a heart of gratitude that in this Christmas season we are free and we are free indeed to live an abundant life for you Jesus free to follow you and to worship you all the days of our lives so we thank you Father God for you are a good God in Jesus name we pray amen amen so good to have communion but let's please welcome Pastor Chiu our senior pastor for the word of God Thank you so much, Brother Isaac. Thank you, worship team. It's been awesome. Do you think it was a wonderful time of worship this morning? Yeah, come on. If you are, give God a good clap offering. Amen. It's so good to be back at the house of God on a Sunday. This is our third service of the weekend. All right. So we have three services every weekend, of course, online as well. We recognize that some of you are not able to come back on site. We also value and honor you. And I'm so glad that you're all tuned in to the services, not only in the Klang Valley, but also overseas as well. I know that. I know that uh, because there's actually somebody who actually tuned in online while we had the MCO all the way from Russia, you know, all the way from Russia. But actually then when the, 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 the war came, they had to evacuate, all right? They had to come back and they are back here today. All right, praise God. And they, and they were so blessed, all right, following us all the way from Russia. Now they are Malaysians. Come on, come on, let's give God help offering. Those of you online, we welcome you every week to listen to the Word of God. So, Father, I need your help once again, even as I communicate what you have downloaded in my spirit, man, that I have benefited so much indeed from studying your Word, digested it, and now, Lord, even as I communicate and share it, help me to be concise, precise, but most importantly, Lord, clear, so that all of us understand with our spirit man, what you're saying to us, not only today, but for the rest of our lives. So thank you, Jesus. We commit to you now this whole uh, 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 time. In Jesus' name, I rock we will say, Amen. 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 Commercial, before I, 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 I begin uh, this seminar, which I'm going to do next week, all right, I do that once a year only on baptism of the Holy Spirit because this is something I know which is a big struggle for many of you, How, especially those of you who come from mainline denomination churches and you're wondering, what is the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Is it a separate experience altogether? Is it a, a, a equivalent to salvation or what? So I'm going to share with you my own journey because I came also from a mainline denomination church from young uh, my dad was the elder of that church. So this was an issue which I struggled a lot. And then over the years, I began to search scripture. And this is my own experience, why I believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So there'll be a lot of scripture. And believe me, you will be blessed. At already over 100 have registered. And we might cap it to 150 at most so that I can dialogue with you. There'll be time for Q&A. So those of you who wants to know, next Saturday, on site, 10, 10 a.m., I think, 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., you'll be blessed. Today, I want to share with you a message entitled, Samson, What Might Have Been, from Judges chapter 16. You notice the word might is in capitals because it's a pun on the word might. Samson, what might have been. Why? Because Samson is synonymous with might. 
So every time we hear Samson, it's strong. Samsonite. <laughs> he just came. I, I didn't say that in the first service. I don't know what else. Strong, right? Strong. Durable. But so when we talk about Samson, I want to zero in on one thing this morning, one key word, key issue, which all of us, without fail, will have to contend with and have to face, whether you believe it or you don't, and it's called prophetic destiny. All of us, without fail, have a prophetic destiny in God, whether you are a Christian or non-Christian. So what is a prophetic destiny? I define it as a distinctive and a unique purpose and a calling that God has placed upon every life here without exception. A distinctive purpose and a calling that God has placed upon your life and my life for a purpose. And all of us should move into that prophetic destiny of our lives, especially if you are a Christian. But you say to me, Pastor, I, I don't care. So what? Whether I fulfill my prophetic destiny or not, no big deal. Well, that's your choice. So you can go through life not bothered about your prophetic destiny in case, sarah, sarah, what comes, what comes. I don't know about you, but for me, I want. I want to live my life fulfilling the purposes of God for my life. I want to live my life as far as I could in the center of the will of God for my life. Why? Because I know that if I don't do that, I miss out on God's purposes and God's blessing. I don't know about you, but I want to. I want to live my life fulfilling God's prophetic destiny for me because it is the higher call. It is what I am burst for. If not, life has no meaning. So I, I, that's where I want to go today that I would highly recommend that you pay attention to what I say, what I'm going to share with you, so that all of us, without fail, can you imagine a thousand of us here today over, and then hundreds more just this morning, and those of you online, every one of us fulfill God's prophetic destiny for our life. You know how, what an impact it will have on the world, in our workplace? And that's my aim. Encourage you to fulfill God's prophetic destiny for your life and your family in your home, in your workplace for the rest of your days. What was Samson's prophetic destiny? It was this. He was chosen as a judge over Israel. Isn't that amazing? How many people can be chosen as a judge? Judge doesn't mean a judiciary judge. Huh? It's a military and a political leader. In the time when Israel, in a span of 250 years, had no king. So God raised up one judge after another judge to lead Israel and for Samson, he was chosen as a judge to lead Israel out of the oppression of the Philistines. And not only that, he had wealth. He had health. Can you imagine that? Strong man might, right? Might not only physically, but also everything. He had fame. He had authority. And he was Leng Chai. <laughs> I'm very sure he was Leng Chai. How do I know? Well, he was probably like this. I, I wish I had that kind of body I don't have, you know what I mean? And I better switch it off 
before the ladies Google Gaga over it. And not only was Samson had all these characteristics, guess what? He was also very spiritual. Sure or not, pastor? Of course. In Judges chapter 14, uh, 13, at the birth of Samson, the woman, that is Samson's mom, gave birth to a boy and named him Samson. He grew, verse 24, and the Lord blessed him. Isn't it amazing? So clear. The Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to stir in him even as a young boy. And three times thereafter, in his adult life, it was recorded that the Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson in power so that he could tear a lion apart, so that he could lift up the gates of the city and carry it. All these are supernatural. How many of us can do that? Clearly, the Spirit of the Lord was upon Samson and, and he was very spiritual initially. But then again, what happened? You see, everything was going on so well with him. Everything was going so well with him. What else, what else do you want? You know, I, and, I, and I was saying to the second service, that any mother would gladly surrender a daughter to him. I think. Lah. Everything he has. What went wrong? What went wrong? So I'm going to ask you a question. And I'm going to answer it for you, for us, at the end of this sermon. So you think... Since my subject matter this morning is on prophetic destiny, and that is applicable to all of us, my question for you regarding Samson is, did Samson fulfill his prophetic destiny? Think. And we're going to answer that at the end of this morning. Did Samson fulfill his prophetic destiny? I'm going to address two groups of people. Firstly, the parents. How many of you are parents? In the balcony? Raise up your hands again. Hey, a lot, man. A lot. A lot. Uh, yeah, at least two thirds or three quarters of you. So, I, I, I'm going to talk to you. How, the second group of people is sons and daughters. How many of you is a son and a daughter? Raise up your hand. <laughs> if you're not, then you're in between. <laughs> so, in other words, I'm going to address all of you. Let me first address parents. You see, we talk so much of Samson, 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 but nobody thinks about Samson's parents, right? Yeah. You know, how does the parents feel? You tell me. An amazing thing was this. Samson's parents actually were very, very godly people. You see? Manoah, the father and the mom, no name. They are very godly. How do I know? Because how many people have angels appearing to you and tell you, hey, you are going to have a son and your son is going to lead Malaysia. Wow. Lead the nation. Even before you conceive, you know. As far as I know, 
besides Jesus Christ, only three other instances where this occurred. Where an angel came or a person, a man of God, spoke to somebody and, and, and before the son was even conceived, and, and these are the three instances. To Sarah, remember Sarah, uh, Abraham's wife? You shall bear a son and you shall call his name Abraham, right? Even before, and Sarah laughed. It's unbelievable. How could it happen? It happened. And the other person was what they call the Shunammite woman in, sec, in Second Kings, when this woman was so kind to the man of God, every time the man of God passed by, she would prepare a room, fantastically hospitable, you know. And, and, and one day, Elisha then called the woman and said, what do you want? The woman said, no, I don't want anything. But Elisha said, no, I want to bless you back. And then Elisha found out that she was barren. And Elisha said, in one year, you shall bear a son. And so he did. And the third person was Elizabeth, who was the mum of John the Baptist. Remember? All of these women are very godly. And the third thing I know about Samson's parents was that he had to raise up Samson under a Nazarite vow. In other words, they have to raise up the son in a godly way. A Nazarite vow means no booze, no dead bodies, no barber, and I think no bride. That's why John the Baptist never married. But this guy, whoa, chasing everyone with a skirt. <laughs> but he had to raise Samson up in the Nazarite vow. In fact, the parents, Manoah, was so awed regarding the responsibility upon them that they asked the angel, how can we do it? Give us a clue. Tell us how to raise up a son. It's like Mary and Joseph, right? Can you imagine that you have to raise up Jesus, you know? Make sure that he, Jesus is all right, you know? Godly parents. But what happened? What went wrong? In spite of the fact that Samson was nurtured in a godly way, I'm very sure, right? And yet, he went wavered. He was rebellious. Everything was going well for him. But what went wrong? Do you not think that if you put yourselves in the shoes of Manoah and the wife, do you think it hurts? You think about it. I've given my best shot. And you see Samson like that. It hurts. What went wrong? You know, when I prepared this message, the Lord said to me, don't only focus on Samson. Think of Samson's parents. What they went through. And the Lord said this to me. And I say this to you. I want to encourage you. Don't give up on your children. I know of some parents whose children have not gone on with God. In fact, quite a number. And it hurts you. Even some of them have gone rebellious, gone away. And you have given your best shot, understand? You have taken them through Kid Zone, Narrow Street, young adults. And when they were young, they were so zealous for God. And yet now when they are older, where were they? Where are they? And I can almost hear the cry 
of a lot of parents. Lord, why? I want to encourage you. Never give up praying for your children. If you are a grandparent, pray. Keep on praying. I want to believe that there is enough of God deposited in your investment on your children that somewhere along the line, they will return back again to God. Understand? I want to affirm you. I want to encourage you. I think of several cases. I can't mention their names. I remember one, 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 one parent came to Pastor Lee Chu and I. Incidentally, I've spoken to this guy already. He said, carry on, Pastor. Tell my testimony, but don't mention my name. So I've asked his permission already, you see. And it's true. He raised out a very godly family, believe me. Went overseas to study. Went wayward. Alcohol. Went into drugs. Failed. You know how hurtful it is? We counseled them, prayed with them, cried with them. What to do? Keep hanging on to God, Lord. But the amazing thing is this. Over the years, something happened in his life. He came back to God big time. And today, he's married with a godly wife and serving the Lord. Isn't it amazing? Come on, let's give God a good clap offering. He deserves the highest praise. That's why I'm saying to you, these are life stories. It happens. There's another gentleman who spoke to me during one of the mission trips to Sabah. She was his daughter who was a top student. Not only a top student, but a very fantastic athlete, an all-rounder. Got a scholarship to go overseas again. But again, gone wayward, wayward. And, and the heart breaks. So successful. What for? Gone away from God. So kept praying, kept praying. And one day, I think maybe his second year or her second year or whatever it is, she, she met a coach in, her, in the field that she was involved in. And I, the field that she was involved in, uh, are you a fantastic one, uh, only a, a, a he, she will get, get that kind of thing, you know what I mean? But this coach was so godly, you know, so godly, took her into his home with his family, nurtured him, mentored him, and today he graduated with flying colours and really gone back to God full, big time, restored back fully. Isn't it amazing? Come on, come on, let's give God a clap offering, come on. It works, it works. Listen to me very carefully. And that's where the Lord wants me to assure you, don't give up. Don't give up. Keep praying. Keep encouraging. Don't scold, understand? Keep praying. Keep loving them and love them back into God's kingdom. And I want to believe that one day, wow, they will return back to God. I want to address now sons and daughters. And that's all of us. What went wrong for Samson? And it's a warning to every one of us. And I said this this morning, including my pastors. You see, including me. What went wrong? We have everything going for us. And I have seen many senior pastors do so well. And suddenly, bang, he fell morally. Another one. What happened? Samson. 
Samson did three things that were wrong. Number one, he crossed boundary lines. Number two, he ignored fault lines. And number three, he diverted from God's plumb line. Result, he went offline. He crossed boundary lines. This is a river with banks. What's the function of the bank? The two boundaries is to keep the water flowing as it meanders in the plains. When the river is kept between the banks and the boundaries, it is very useful, right? It is a means of transportation. It is a vehicle. I mean, a, a means, a, 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 a way. Uh, it's irrigation, right? And it's a source of water, fish, life. But what happens if it breaks boundary lines? This Australia. Devastation. Whatever that is meant for life now brings death. Whatever that is meant to bring purpose, usefulness, function is now bring devastation and destruction to life and property. And that's exactly what's happened to your life. I've seen it, my friends. I've seen it so many times. When you cross boundary lines, your life becomes a destructive force, not only to yourself, but to your families, to your careers, to the name of God. Why? Why? Pastor John Lowe says this, Samson tested the waters of morality, blurred the lines of goodness, and cut corners in integrity. Samson was a high roller in life who not only failed to control his hormones, but he also failed to discipline his muscles. And the last sentence is so key. Nothing was sacred to him. What about you? Is there something that you will not cross? You know, uh, President Biden met up with Xi Jinping recently in Bali, remember? And they made an agreement that there are certain red lines they won't cross, correct or not? There must be certain red lines in your life as a Christian you will not cross. Why, huh? Because if not so, then nothing is sacred to you. Lah. You come to church, you look good, you sing good, you behave well, you serve, and yet when you go outside there from Monday to Friday, you're a totally different creature. Why? There are certain boundary lines that we cannot cross as a Christian. Mark Atterbury says this, if you trample down God's fences and are partaking of things that are off limits, you are in great danger of being shamed. It's okay uh, if you are shamed, uh, but you shame your God. Uh. You shame your church. Uh. And I said that to my pastors this morning. Whatever you do, uh, you want to die, go and die, uh but don't shame the name of your church. Huh? Don't shame your God, huh? correct or not? Yeah, that's what I said to some of these guys, you know, when I, when I do counselling with a, with a guy, you know, who's probably playing around and a wife cry, cry, cry. And I said to this bloke, 
listen, uh, you want to die, go and die. Uh. But don't destroy your, your wife, your children, your children. There are certain boundary lines we cannot cross. And Samson did it as if there's no tomorrow. The second thing that went along with Samson was that he ignored his fault lines. What is a fault line? A fault line, according to the dictionary, is a fracture within the earth's crust distinguished from a simple crack by the break in the continuity of the substrata. Now, there's a lot of words there. I, I just want to highlight fracture, crack, break in the continuity. In other words, there is a weakness. There is a fracture. There is something in the inner life that you know and nobody else knows only God and you know, even your wife don't know, that is a real you. Understand? And I say this to all guys and girls, every one of you. Remember, sons and daughters, right? Not only guys, you know, but ladies as well. You know, I, I do a lot of, not a lot, does quite a number of men's camps, and I love it. You know, when men come together, I love to hear men sing one, no? Whoa! <laughs> it's different, right? right? It's different when men come together, this is the high of Elijah, you know, that kind of thing. Like, you, know? you know, I love the, 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 the sound of men's voices, and, and, and I, I do men's camps. Incidentally, uh, next year we're having a men's camp. So make sure your husband and your boyfriend come. Uh. <laughs> All right. The last time we had was over 10 years ago in Port Dixon. And we had a wonderful time. I, I, I don't know whether any one of you were there. Uh, you were there at Samkyong, right? And you know the things we, we, we shared there, up to today, nobody knows, right? Because our mouth is sealed. <laughs> and I won't tell you. The things were shared shocked me even. Though. But we prayed one another. Today, many of them are still going on with God. Understand? So I do men's camps and I tell them this. Every person, now not only men, but also women, uh, consists of three entities. What I call the superstructure, the structure, and the substructure. So what is the superstructure? It is your degrees, your datoks, your reputation, your fame, what you have done. Everybody clap, clap, clap. Whoa, so good, man. And for those senior pastors and pastors, the books that you write, the conferences that you speak, 100,000, so good, man, is the aura. The structure is your physical body. La. The structure. But what is so important is a substructure. Who are you in private? What are you? What kind of a character are you when you are alone? The real you. And it's not, look, I, I got weaknesses, understand? I'm saying to you, not because I, I'm super, super, no, I'm not. You think I don't have weaknesses? You think I'm not, I'm not tempted? but I keep myself apart from God. I build up my spirit, man. I don't want to shame my God, understand? I don't want to shame my God. I don't want to destroy my family so that my children can say, my dad followed the Lord, understand? And I build up and I avoid. There are boundary lines that I put. Boundary lines, believe me. For 27 years, I was an obstetrician kind of college. You think I wasn't tempted? But I put boundary lines. Same for you. And I said to my pastors this morning, especially for you. Uh, and I say to all my leaders, 
very important. Recognize your fault line. John Maxwell says this, one of the reasons I want to be a godly man is that I don't want to wake up one day and realize that I have missed it and lost out on the best that God has for me, your prophetic destiny, just because I have been careless. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Hear me, hear me well, my friend. I say with all my heart, as we close the year, let's get back online. Come back to God's plumb line, my friend. All these things are put in not to restrict you, but to protect you. Understand? It's so that God can bless you and your family. But pastor, you know, I'm restricted. Like Samson, no? I came, I saw, I conquered. Everything I want, I get. Ha! Huh. You may have the means. You may have the authority. You may be in a position to take whatever you want. But where is your self-control? There is a plumb line. And a plumb line is put in there so that the blessings of God can be flowed to you and your loved ones. Listen to me. It is not to restrict you. It is to bless you and to protect you, understand But the amazing thing is this, and I find this absolutely amazing. Samson went away from God. The Holy Spirit came upon him at birth, in his adult life. Somewhere, the Spirit of God left him. And the saddest verse in the Bible, in my opinion, one of the saddest anyway, he didn't know it. Then she called Delilah, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and he thought, hey, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. It's the same, huh? God has rescued me. God has forgiven me. God has salvaged me. Hey, I escaped the last time, but this time I'm smarter. Except you're a smarter crook, that's all. You see? But he didn't know. He has reached the point of no return. He has crossed the red line. He has crossed the red line. He didn't know that God has left him. And I hope and I pray I'm not speaking to anyone here today. It's nothing to do with your service. It's nothing to do with your titles. Nothing to do with the position. It's your standing before God, understand. Hear me, hear me so well. It's your standing before God. Where are you? You know, I, I told the first service, it's never the intention and the purpose of God to make you happy one. What? Yeah. God's intention is make you holy, not happy. <laughs> happy one morning, sad the next day. Depends on your mood. You think God is, is, is a, that type of person? Huh? No. He wants to set you apart. Understand? His intention is to set you apart so that He can bless you, so that He can be with you. Understand? So that He can bless your family. So can I encourage you today? Get back online. Don't go offline. <laughs> you know what it is to go offline with the internet? Bang, 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 offline. 
And Jamin will tell me, hey, hey, Jamin, what happened? Broke down, offline. Get back online. Connect with God again. Understand? Connect back with God again. You know, lah. You know where you stand at the moment, understand? Listen to me very carefully. I'm not saying this out of judgment, judgmental spirit. I think out of love, understand? Get back to God online. Tenth of September, 1983, Korean Air 007 set out from New York City en route to Seoul. Little did they know that the pilot punched in in New York City to program the route, route that he would take by a small mistake. But as the airplane moves along its flight path, because of the configuration of the world, of the earth, in its longitude, what started as a very small error becomes bigger and bigger as it moves on. But he didn't know until the airplane went over Soviet territory, over Vladivostok, and was shot down by Soviet MIGs. 269 passengers perished, almost like MH17, but they're different. This one swayed, of course. The pilot didn't know. My prayer, do a course correction. Understand? Do a cause correction. Get back online with God. So can I have the worship team on the stage? How did Samson end? Oh, it's amazing. I, I thought I've, I'll, 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 I'll point out this verse. You know, Samson was blinded and then he was there. And, uh, and, uh, and amazingly spiritual, you see, he's spiritual. I'll tell you why. Because all these things happened in the temple of Dagon, where the, the priests were there and all the kings and princesses and all of them were there in the temple of Dagon, you know. In other words, it's spiritual, highly spiritual. And you know what they did? They they were in high spirits, they shouted, bring out Samson to entertain us. So they called Samson out of the prison and he performed for them. And I remember in my marginal notes, and he performed for them, and I wrote down there, I don't know when I wrote this, could it also include immoral acts? I'm sure. A judge, chosen, Destined for greatness. Why? What was the turnaround? And with this, I'll close. Samson began to pray. Oh, sovereign Lord, remember me. O oh, Sovereign Lord, remember me. Do you think God remembered Samson? Of course. Your name, my name, every one of our names is written in the palms of the hands of Jesus Christ. And every time the Lord looks at His palms with a nail prince, he sees your name. So when you cry to Him, Lord, remember me, the Lord looks at the palms. Your name is there. He remembers you. And then He said, please. What? Never. Never in the entire four chapters of, of Judges was the word please. Samson humbled himself. And he pleaded to God to restore him. And it's a paradox and ironical that the word Samson means sunshine. Now what sunshine? Cannot even see. 
but he pleaded. He came back to God again. And this is my answer to you. Did Samson fulfill his prophetic destiny? And my answer to you is this. No. He did not fulfill his destiny while he was alive. But he fulfilled his prophetic destiny in his death. He wasted his time. He wasted opportunities. He wasted his resources. He wasted his energy. He wasted his talents and gifts. But you say, Pastor, I can still speak so well. I can still serve, right? Yeah, it's not you. Because the Bible tells me the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. It's you. Ah. No, it's not you. It's God. The reason why some senior pastors are able to take off their jacket and swing and half of them are fall is to be not because of them, because of God. The calling and the gifts of God are irrevocable, not you. But God in His mercy, in His grace, because He came back to God big time, God forgave. And in His death, yeah, He fulfilled His prophetic destiny. Hebrews 11 says this, What more shall I say? I do not have time to tell you about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, Judges, David, Samuel, and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised. It is the grace of God, my friend, the mercy of God upon your life. You come back to God and come back online. Oh, hallelujah, God. Oh, Ramanda Kadada, Sheria Kadada, Handa. I'm going to give an altar call in a short while. For two categories of people. The first category I want to give to parents you have a sibling, a brother, or a sister who have gone away from God and you were raised in a godly family. Your parents are, are very godly. You yourself have children that have gone away and you have given your best shot, you know. You've given your best shot, you know. And today, they are nowhere near God. I want you to come. And I don't want you to come because I'm going to make up the numbers. No, it's not, it's not like that. I want to believe I want to believe with you that even as you bring forth your son or your daughter to God, something will happen. Something will happen, my friend. Something will happen because you are now coming to God and I'm very sure that's what Samson's parents did non-stop. You come. It could be your sibling, he could be your relative. He could be your son or your daughter. The second group of people that I'm opening the altar call is for those of you who wants to ask God to fulfill your prophetic destiny in God. You know, I, I had a, a note from somebody in the first service this morning. Somehow he got my email. He said, Pastor, your sermon moved me so much. He said he was in the corporate sector for many years. But now he wants to come back and serve God again. He says, what can I do? Give me the name of somebody that I can call. I gave him the number of one of my pastors, you see. And I was so encouraged. Why? Because God, you're not finished, understand? God has not finished with you. You want to live the rest of your days fulfilling your prophetic destiny. I don't know what it is. I would open the altar. You have come from another church, I don't know. But today, you come before God, you can come as husband and wife and say, yes, Lord, yes. We want to live the rest of our days loving you, serving you, giving you our best shot, not only for my family, but for myself, so that my prophetic destiny can be fulfilled and not truncated. Oh, Rashanda Karada, let's all stand. Shall we do all stand?
Stand with me. Oh, Ramanda Kata Ra 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 Shura Kala So Pray in Tongues for a while Shall we do Let's go This is the holy moment The solemn moment Oh, Ra Let's all pray in tongues For a short while Oh, Ramanda Kata Ra 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 Shira Kata Ra 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 Respond to God Respond to Him You know, Spirit Man I'm going to call you forward Those are two categories And I'm going to lead you In a general prayer I'm going to lead you In a general prayer You pray with me Even as the people minister to you By coming forward You're saying Yes, Lord Yes, Lord no more, no more, no more. Oh yes, God. Oh Ramanda kata da 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 shorya kata da da handai. I'm gonna pray, and then I'm gonna open the altar. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to pray in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God, that we will respond to you. Then, in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Father, we say enough is enough. That this day, on this day, I don't even know the date of today, but it doesn't matter. On this day in SIBKL, Father, I want to give my life for you. We have sung it. We have sung it this morning. But Father, I want to express it out in my life so that God, my children, will have a future not only politically in our nation, but also the blessings of God will flow from generation to generation to generation to a thousand generations. And this is the, the delight of God, understand? It's a delight, it's not your right, it's a delight. And God wants to bless you. Will you come back to Him? Will you say to the Lord, Yes, Lord, I surrender my family, I surrender my children, I surrender my siblings to you. You we are, you and afterwards, as I give the altar call, you come forward. And for those of you who want to live the rest of your days asking God, that I want to fulfill my prophetic destiny whatever it is you come and then God will reveal to you understand those on the balcony so you can come down oh hallelujah Father we know that it's a solemn moment we surrender it to your hands and we don't do it for show we know God even as you respond to your eternal word eternity now becomes now it is the eternality eternality of the now it is the eternality of the now so that we live our eternal life beginning now now so that whatever we do in this present life will matter and count for the life to come so that we don't waste our time chasing other shadows but we live our lives make it count for the glory of the risen lord thank you jesus come let's all sing this song and you come forward as the lord leads you lord i come to you Come to the Lord, my friend. Don't come to me. Don't come to the church. As the Spirit tucks in your spirit, man. Oh, Ramanda Kata, da 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 as husband and wife, for your sake of your children. And let's come humbly before God, understand? Believing, believing that our simple step of faith, a simple step of faith, we trust God that your children will come back to God, understand? Your son, your daughter will come back to God big time, big time, big time. Oh, Ramanda Kata, da 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 Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord with me. Worship God with me, my friend. He is in the house. Oh, God is in the house. Let's worship Him. Your spirit leads me on. power of you. God loves you. God loves you. I affirm you. God loves you. God loves you. You're forgiven. You're forgiven. Let go and let God, let go and let God, you're forgiven. Oh, Ramanda, Oh, 
I need leaders to come and minister to the people. You are a leader of souls. May you please come and minister and help. Thank you, Jesus. Whoa. Worship the Lord with me. Come into the house. Get back online. Connect. 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 Don't disconnect. Connect. Connect with God. Reach out to Him. Reach out to Him. The chorus again, shall we do that? Whoa, come on! Hallelujah, hallelujah. Whoa. Worship the Lord with me. Worship the Lord with me. Whoa. Yes, Lord. Silence and quietness before God as ministry goes to the front. I want every one of you to be blessed, understand? So that there's not a single person here because you came. God will encounter you. So I'm going to lead you in a general prayer. As ministry continues at the front, if you are not ministered to, you can join me in the prayer. For the rest of you, you follow after me. Is it okay with you? Everybody say, Father God, today I come humbly before you, acknowledging my weakness, acknowledging my fault line. I am sorry that I have wandered away from you. Father, forgive. One more time. Father, forgive. Today, I'm going to come back online with you. I want to rededicate my life back to you once again. I want to consecrate my life. I want to consecrate my family. I want to consecrate my work, my ministry. Back to you again. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. To live the rest of my days loving you, serving you, honouring you receive me O Lord let me fulfil my prophetic destiny in my life that I may finish well thank you Jesus hallelujah just spend a moment of quietness before I close we do that every one of you Let the words of that prayer sink into your spirit, man. Renew your covenant with God. Because God is a covenant-keeping God, understand? 
Oh Ramanda kata dada 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 shore kata dada manda. Let today be a new fresh beginning for you, your family. As we close 2022 in a one month's time, so that we exit well and enter well. Understand? We exit well and enter well again, so that the blessings of God can flow once again. Oh, Ramanda kata da 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 shorya kata handai. Every one of you, just spend another minute with God. Ramanda kata da 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 shore kata da da handai. Father, we thank you. Let's all stretch our hands to the Lord as we close. Shall we do that? We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, your favor that you have given to us. I want to pray, Father Lord, that even as we leave this place, your goodness will always be with us. And I want to pray, Exodus chapter twenty-three, verse twenty-five, to your, to you and your family. That as you worship the Lord every moment of your days, the blessing of the Lord will be upon your food and your water. In other words, you will have good appetite to eat. Understand? One of the early signs of sickness is you have no appetite. So the blessing of the Lord will be upon your food and your water. The Lord says, "I will take away sickness from among you. Not only whatever you are sick about, even in the future, the Lord will put a protection upon you and your family. No bacteria, no virus, no parasite will attack you and your family. Understand? Because the Lord says, 'I will take sickness away from you, and none will miscarry.'" Or be barren in your land. In other words, not only in your womb, but also in the work of your hands, you will be fruitful. You will be blessed in your coming in and in your going out, and your basket will always be full. And the Lord says, "I will give you a full lifespan." In other words, your life will not be shortened. If it's not time for you to go, you won't go. Time for you to go. You go. And my prayer is that all of us live to our full lifespan. So, Father, I want to pray that this prayer will be upon every one of us on site and online, so that we live the rest of our days loving you, serving you, honoring you, and the joy of the Lord will be our strength. The joy of the Lord will be our strength, and so may the Lord bless you and keep you this day. May the Lord make His face always to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face towards you and your loved ones wherever they are, and always grant you His shalom. In Jesus' name, I pray. And all God's people say aloud, "Amen." God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful week. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for service today. If you would like someone to pray for you, head over to the link, and our pastors and leaders would love to pray and connect with you. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. All you need to do is to scan this QR code, and it will lead you to our giving page. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. 
You can also drop your Titan offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. Hi everyone! Would you like to get to know SIBKL a little bit more? If you've ever had such questions like, how can I join a cell group? How can I serve in a ministry? How can I be discipled? How can I be a member? How can I join one of our SIBKL events? Or any other questions? then I invite you to click on the link below and we will connect with each other via WhatsApp. One of our Connect leaders will reach out to you. We would love to connect with you, so we invite you to connect with us. God bless.